Hi, my name is Charles Miller, and this is my project on Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was a part of the Italian High Renaissance. During this time, art flourished for about 35 years from the early 1490s to the late 1520s, when Rome was sacked by the Visigoths. Leonardo, along with other famous artists such as Michelangelo and Raphael, came to their height during this time. Many famous works that we study and still cherish today were created during the Italian High Renaissance. Pieces like the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, the Sistine Chapel were all done during this time. Leonardo was born on April 15, 1452, in Vinci, Italy. He had a curious mind and a keen intellect, and da Vinci studied the laws of nature. This greatly informed his work as a painter, sculptor, architect, inventor, military engineer, and draftsman. His ideas and bodies of work, which include the Vitruvian Man, the Last Supper, and Mona Lisa, have influenced countless artists and have made da Vinci a leading light in the Italian Renaissance. As a child, Leonardo received little formal education beyond basic reading, writing, and math. However, it was very evident by the age of 14 that he was going to be going on to great things, as he was able to secure an apprenticeship with the noted artist Andrea del Verrocco in Florence. In Florence, he would be working with a wide range of skills, including metalworking, leather arts, carpentry, drawing, painting, and sculpting. His earliest dated work is a pen and ink drawing of a landscape of the Arno Valley, which was sketched in approximately 1473. By the age of 20 years old, da Vinci qualified for membership as a master artist in Florence's Guild of St. Luke's and even established his own workshop. However, he was believed to continue to collaborate with his teacher for at least an additional five years, even helping him with his Baptism of Christ piece around 1475. Just a few years after moving to his new workshop, Leonardo and four young men were charged with sodomy. However, they were all acquitted. Leonardo was then able to return to his workshop and continue on his work. Here, he did his designs for the very first helicopter, as well as the very first winged flight system, which we can see in the painting on the slide. After finally settling in his studio, da Vinci received his first independent commission in 1478 for an altarpiece that would reside in the chapel inside Florence's Plazio Vecizio. Three years later, Augustinian monks of Florence's San Donato a Scampo asked him to paint the Adoration of Magi. The young artist, however, would leave the city and abandon both commissions without ever completing them. Leonardo continued to receive work despite his abandonment of his two projects in Florence. Throughout his lifetime, Leonardo continued to study as many different areas as he possibly could, including art. Leonardo thought sight was humankind's most important sense and therefore the eyes were the most important organ. He stressed the importance of knowing how to see. He believed in the accumulation of direct knowledge and facts through observation. He stated that a good painter has two chief objectives to paint, a man and the intentions of his soul. The former is easy, the latter is hard, for it must be expressed by gestures and the movement of the limbs. Leonardo clearly knew what he was talking about and knew exactly how to paint what he was trying to portray. To guide himself as well as others, Leonardo created the Vitruvian Man, pictured here in the top left picture of the slide. As you can see, Leonardo perfectly proportioned each body part to help guide his paintings as well as others. He used this proportion on the Mona Lisa as well as the Last Supper.
His many varied works of art show that Leonardo was not just an artist. He was an inventor, a brilliant scientist, a mathematician, a writer, and even dabbled in philosophy, all of which aided in creating his masterpieces and rough prototypes of things like helicopters and airplanes, and many, many more. As said before, the Mona Lisa was created with help from the Vitruvian Man. Leonardo referenced the Vitruvian Man and his proportions he made there to influence his work on this piece. As John Lightfeld said in his piece on the Mona Lisa, it is the best known, most visited, most written about, most sung about, and the most parodied work of art in the world. Now, I also know this to be true as I have visited the Mona Lisa myself and was only able to get within 50 feet of the painting due to it being so crowded in the room. As you can see in the picture above, many people are trying to get a picture of the painting which seems so small when it put in such a large room. Many consider this to be Leonardo's best work and a perfect example of how to paint proper proportions. Leonardo already showed that he can draw proper proportions, however, the detail that went into this piece was unlike any other before. Many reference the hands on Mona Lisa to show just the exact detail that he went through. Leonardo returned to Milan in 1506 and spent most of his time there studying science, math, and philosophy. He was commissioned by Gian Giacomo Trivulzio in 1499 to create an equestrian statue that would sit atop his tomb after his death. Leonardo worked very hard for many years and drew many numerous sketches, but ultimately the statue was never completed. A mind like Leonardo da Vinci's only comes around once every millennia, and it's a shame that he was only able to live to 67 years old. Unfortunately, Leonardo died on May 2nd, 1519, leaving many works uncompleted. Although Leonardo da Vinci is known for his artistic abilities, fewer than two dozen paintings are actually attributed to him. One reason for this is that his interests were extremely varied, so he wasn't a prolific painter. For centuries afterward, however, thousands of pages of private journals with notes, drawings, observations, and scientific theories have surfaced and provided a fuller measure of how true he was as a Renaissance man.